Okay, this is Lily with MMA in Asia, and I'm talking to the one and only Sokuju. Um, you started in judo yeah. when you were a kid, yeah. and I read a lot about your, your judo days as a kid, <laughs> and I read something about how your parents would hide your gi when you were a bad boy. Actually, when I, I remember once I broke my ankle, and then uh, the, that was like, no, no more judo, because I thought it was too dangerous, so I had to wear my gi under my clothes and pretend to go <laughs> my neighbors and yeah it was pretty funny <laughs> did that keep you out of trouble after that ah uh, uh, can i play the feet <laughs> now you can <laughs> and you have a you've opened your own gym now with yeah, team quest in encinitas, yeah. encinitas okay um i'm curious are you teaching judo there unfortunately in america judo isn't really um it's hard to how can I say this right? Be people hate the fact that they fall all the time. They rather go to a spot where they can either lay on the back or do something else than you know take falls all day. Because judo is tons of repetition, tons of throws all day. So in America, it's you know when I first started, you know there was a bunch of people interested, but then when they found out actually judo, it's about taking falling. They thought, well, if it's judo, I can only throw people, but I'll never get thrown. <laughs> but guess what? You know, if there's two people, you know, it needs to go back and forth. And that's been the struggle with, you know, judo, trying to, you know, make people understand, you know, you got to learn how to fall and throw the people too. Well, it's become um, a pretty important component of the guys who are successful in MMA with judo backgrounds. Yeah, I mean, because it's a little different. People used to wrestling, so when you come out with judo, you know, that kind of throws them off a little bit, and then uh, there's some techniques that most people haven't seen, and it's easy to, you know, implement with MMA. Do you think it's an important aspect? Are you coaching guys, MMA guys, in this? Um, whenever I have a chance, yeah, but it, it's, it's all different because unlike wrestling where you don't actually need a wrestling base to learn wrestling for MMA, Judo, you, you have to go to the basics before you can learn the right move, which it's been a struggle because you come to MMA practice, you try to teach them Judo, but no one can understand because the basis isn't there. So it, it's a good tool, but you need to go back to the really basics. And learn. Uh, when you were invited to Team Quest first to train, help with Dan Henderson, uh, was it because of your Judo? Yeah, because um, at the time, Dan was fighting on Nakamura, so they were looking for someone who knew some judo, and I was local, and that's how I got involved with Team Quest. And then never looked back. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your training there. Um, well, it's, uh, you know, like every other day, just come in, get your butt kicked, go home, cry, <laughs> feel depressed, and come back again for some more. You, you say a lot of funny things about Dan, like he's an old guy, but but he's really, really in shape. <laughs> you know what? When uh, I look at Dan, I go, shit, you know? He's the only guy in the room that beats me up pretty bad, and I go, even the younger guy, I'll, you know, handle him, but Dan, he's got that old man strength, and it's, you know, he, he's, he's a pretty tough guy, and he's been in the business for a long time, so he knows all the tricks and everything, but it always comes up with some weird random way of punching you and taking you down so he's he's a handful guy so you think that's contributed to your evolution as a fighter yeah because uh, i remember the first time i trained with dan i was able to do certain techniques but with dan you will do a technique once but you'll never be able to do it twice so it's always you know it forces you to improve your game and always try to find new ways of doing things because he's he he'll you get away with one thing, but the next day you come in, he will have a solution for it. So he's pretty, you know, intense and smart guy. Do you do you practice like your throws on him and then see what, sure. see what he comes up with? <laughs> Does it help you? Well, yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's hard to say I practice on him because there's no <laughs> practice for them. You know, when you try, you really have to try hard because otherwise he will break your face. So, <laughs> so that's how it is with Dan. Okay, with your, your opponent coming up, have you have you researched him, watched any tape on him? Yeah, I watched some tapes, I watched some fights. Um, he's fight with the Dennis Can, his few fights in other organizations, and yeah, I've seen some of, the, some of his fights. So, do you have like a strategy you're going to use against him? 
Well, given, given your background. He, he said he wants to come and bang, so I guess that's what we're going to be doing uh, in, on Saturday. Punch each other until one of us falls first. I want to see that spinning back kick. <laughs> uh, well, punching, kicking, it's just training. So, well, But when fight night, uh, fight night comes out, you know, you never plan on using a specific technique. I mean, you come up with a game plan, but, you know, guy, the guy I haven't seen a... On Sherlock, it shows he hasn't fought since 2011, but you don't know between that time and now what kind of fighter he's become and what he's been doing. So, uh, you know, I'll go there and just, you know, it's true you need to have a game plan, but when you don't have that much information about a guy, you just got to be there and make sure you can improvise on the spot. Your time in Japan, I know you really, really liked that because <laughs> of the judo background. That was sort of, that actually, you at the beginning of your MMA career you got launched into a dream that yeah. so many fighters have <laughs> to just not just to fight in a high level as pride but actually to fight in Japan I talked yeah. to so many guys that are like I really want to fight in Japan but the scene there has gone I mean it's big there's tons of t still tons of promotions there when I go there I still see you know it's, it seems like everybody knows MMA but that's not the reality anymore um, but in Korea however they still maintain uh, the knowledge of the sport. The the guys of the sport um, are are household names, and of course you've got Korean Zombie, and <laughs> you know you've got you've got some really big name guys coming out now uh, in the UFC who are from Korea. Um, what do you think about about fighting here now? Have you looked at this promotion before? Have you looked at Road FC before? Um, told the truth, um, yes. I don't know what I was looking at, but I saw some other fights, and that was pretty interesting. You know, but as far as I don't, when I got the call to fight here, I was even more excited because, uh, you know, watching the shows. I, I don't remember who I was looking, but then I got into into Road FC. They had a fight. It was like really, I was on YouTube. I don't know what I was looking for. But they had a fight of really light guys fighting. It was an intense fight. I don't remember the, the name of the guys, but I was just blown away. I was like, wow, there was some good fighters out there. So um, it just don't, doesn't come back right now, but yeah, yeah I've, I've, one one of my YouTube days, I I've seen a few fights from here. And the production is very pride quality. Yeah, so it's really kind of was, exciting. Yeah, they keep uh, they want me to do this uh, awesome entrance on fight night, so <laughs> it'll be interesting. So you're you're planning on do that, doing something <laughs> for the Korean fans? Yeah, they, uh, Jake, I guess he's putting everything together. It would be great if you do that. <laughs> It'd be so much fun. Yeah. I think you'd be you'd really be surprised about the reception. Um, this is um, Korea is very there. There are many many gyms, and it's quite easy to travel from one area to another. So all the guys that are from either other parts of Korea are going to bring like busloads of people. So oh. you'll have cheering sections, and it's be very uh, very exciting. Yeah, like kind of like a football match in a way. <laughs> uh, is there anybody? There, there's so many free agents now. You know, the UFC's got this. Got this. Uh, pretty much, you come in for a few fights, and Maybe if you don't rise to the cream of the crop, you're out. Uh, so that means there's a lot of free agents out there right now. Um, seems like a lot of the good guys are making their way over to Asia now. This is pretty hot market. Mm, I'm not. I don't follow too much free agents like per se. I just, uh, you know, when do I get a call? Who's my next target? And that's what I focus on. So as far as free agents, um, I don't know. Whoever, whatever contract comes my way, and uh, you know, just about tr proper training and proper timing, and you know, take a fight. Anybody you think there'd be a dream opponent for you? You know, I used to have those back in the days, but now it's about hey, you know, what will be the next guy who get me where I want to be? What will be the next fight that will get me back on track and you know, clean my record and everything? So it's not about, hey, I want that guy, you know, there needs to be a reason. So it's just strategy right now and, you know, get back into the big shows. Okay. Well, I think you'll be pretty happily surprised about how big this show is. Yeah, um, I mean, that's why, you know, uh, I take a fight, one fight at a time. I got an opponent right now and that's my focus. After the fight, depending on the outcome, then I'll, you know, redirect my, uh, you know, my focus. Excellent. Looking forward to a great right. stand and bang or maybe some judo throws, please. <laughs> hey, uh, he said he wanted to bang, so let's see what he's got. So, ooh, you know, I, I never back down at a fight. I always come in and, you know, put up a good show and, yeah. you know, that's my main goal. Come on, you know, get the fans excited and, you know, get the win.
and you do that, and that's why everybody still <laughs> loves you so much. Thank All you right. so much for speaking with me. All right, thanks for the